Well, the last time I brought up this subject, it resulted in a two-week news cycle about translucent mermaids. So we'll try to beat that record this time around. Halle Bailey, who I have to keep being reminded is a person completely distinct from Halle Berry, has been doing the media rounds in preparation for the release of the live-action Little Mermaid, which I think comes out soon, uh, in which Bailey plays the race-swapped version of the titular character. But there will be other adjustments and edits made this time around, uh, we're being told, as Uproxx reports, quote, Halle Bailey has a monster year in store. Her leading turn as Ariel in Disney's The Little Mermaid live remake is out in May, but her Ariel doll is already in demand. Bailey is also set to star as Nettie in The Color Purple in December, and she talked about the weight of both roles as the cover star of Edition Modern Luxuries. Edition Modern Luxuries. That's the, that's the whole magazine. Anyway, Edition Modern Luxuries March issue. In the accompanying cover story, Bailey explained how 2023's The Little Mermaid left behind the original version's shades of sexism. Quote, I'm really excited for my version of the film because we've definitely changed that perspective of just her wanting to leave the ocean for a boy. It's way bigger than that. It's about herself, her purpose, her freedom, her life, and what she wants. She continued, as women, we are amazing. We are independent. We are modern. We are everything and above. And I'm glad that Disney is updating some of these themes. Bailey has transparently talked about the horrifically racist backlash she's been subjected to since her casting in 2019. She did so again with addition, quote, seeing the world's reaction to it was definitely a shock, but seeing all the babies' reaction, all the brown and black young girls, really tore me up emotionally. It's honestly been such a crazy ride, and I genuinely feel shocked and honored and grateful to be in this position. A lot of times I have to pinch myself and be like, is this real life? Now, you should know that the... Um, claim of horrifically racist backlash is supported with a link to an article from the same website a few years ago, also claiming that there was racist backlash, but neither the original article nor this new one ever specifically cite any example of racist backlash. This is a trend that holds true for almost any article or media report about racist backlash against this film or racist backlash against any other film. You'll, you'll hear about the backlash. You can read stories about the backlash. The actors in the film will speak out bravely against the, the backlash. People will denounce the backlash, but nobody will ever show you the backlash. You never actually see where this backlash is happening because it's mostly fictional. The racist backlash against the Black Mermaid is as fictional as the mermaid herself. In truth, very few people have actually complained that the mermaid is black. And the few who have mentioned the race, like myself, for example, I've mentioned it, have made points that can't be reasonably construed as racist by any thinking person, which is why they won't provide any examples of what we're actually saying. So in my case, just to review, I am opposed in general to these DEI race swaps of classic characters for two reasons. One, back to the theme of double standards, if it went the other way, Every single one of these media outlets would be condemning it as racial appropriation. All of them. And we all know they would. Okay, I happen to believe in holding these people to their own standard, which means that since they would complain about black characters being made white, we should call them out for making white characters black. This is not our standard, but theirs. If so-called whitewashing is a problem, then so is blackwashing. You don't get to make up different rules, or at least if you do, we're going to call you out on it. That's it. Two, there is an obvious point behind the race swaps. It's not a matter of them simply hiring the actor who happens to have the best audition. To return to an example I've used before, M Morgan Freeman's character in Shawshank Redemption was written to be a white Irish guy, hence the name Red. But nobody ever complained that they made him black. Uh, most don't even know that the character was supposed to be white because they didn't make him black for the sake of him being black. They made him black because Morgan Freeman was made for that role, and it's impossible to imagine anyone else playing it. That's the kind of race swapping that no one has a problem with or should have a problem with. But it's different these days because now they specifically look for a non-white actor to take these traditionally white roles. This is an actual targeted and intentional campaign to minimize the number of white characters on screen. There's no question that they're doing this. They'll tell you that they're doing it. And given those intentions, I object. I think it's a bad thing to intentionally erase white, pe you know, white people from films by erasing white characters. I don't think you should do that. And it gets worse the more they do it. The latest now is the new Peter Pan film, where both Peter Pan and Tinkerbell have been made non-white, and then a few of the Lost Boys have been made into girls as well. Again, none of this is happenstance as a result of casting the best actors for the roles. 
If it was, then who cares? It was a decision made ahead of time to find someone who is not white to portray these traditionally white characters. Now, of course, they celebrate the race swaps. They speak tearfully about what it means for, quote, black and brown children to be, quote, represented by yet another white character turned black. But if you dare suggest that white children will feel less represented, you'll be mocked and screamed at and accused of making a big deal out of the thing that they themselves are insisting is a big deal. I mean, they're crying about how great it is. And then if you say, you know, uh, I'm not sure that I really agree. Why are you making such a big deal about this? That's the game here. They erase the white characters. They applaud themselves loudly for doing it. But if you notice what they're doing and you say even one word about it, you're petty and ridiculous and also, of course, racist. No matter what you say. Indeed, this very segment is guaranteed to end up reported by left-wing media outlets with a headline like, Matt Walsh goes on crazed racist rant about Little Mermaid. There's no way of discussing the very open, very clear, very intentional agenda of minimizing white representation on screen without automatically being accused of petty bigotry. This is how they rig things. The ultimate crime, according to the left, is the crime of noticing. They do things, they do these things loudly and proudly, but you cannot notice that they are doing the things. To simply notice it is to commit a grave sin of some kind. But of course, with these woke remakes, it's not just about adjusting the racial makeup of the characters. It's also about updating the themes, as Bailey says. In this case, they're going to correct some of the sexism, quote unquote, of the original by ensuring that the mermaid leaves the ocean not to chase some dude, but to pursue her own personal fulfillment. After all, Bailey clarifies, women are all amazing and they're independent and they're modern. And she's right about that last point, at least. I mean, all women living today are modern in the sense that they are living today. Not much of an achievement, though. I mean, being born at this point in the chronology of human events is not in itself a virtue, nor does it automatically make you you right or does it vindicate your your value systems just because it happens to be the thing that's happening right now. Now, this is a fact that comes as news to progressives as chronological snobbery is a characteristic inherent to progressivism. I mean, it's right there in the name of the ideology. Recently, we've discussed the um, growing scourge in the publishing world called sensitivity readers. And these are the woke hall monitors who are paid to read old books, sometimes new books too, and make updates to the author's language and themes so that they reflect leftist values. And often these updates are made without the author's consent because often the author is dead and cannot consent. And this is essentially what Disney is doing with its own catalog right now. Um, I wouldn't be so very surprised if they actually hired sensitivity viewers to watch the old cartoons and make suggestions about how best to bring them into conformity with current left-wing sensibilities. But whatever the process they follow, this is what they're doing. And just as a sensitivity readers are hamstrung by their inability to understand the text that they're butchering, the same goes for the woke updaters at Disney. I mean, it's bad enough that they're cannibalizing their own intellectual property. Worse, they don't even understand their own intellectual property. I mean, I last watched The Little Mermaid uh, all the way through like 30 years ago, I guess. And even I remember that in the original version, uh, the, the Little Mermaid was already motivated to leave the ocean before she met the guy. She sang a whole song about it, didn't she? So the, the girl power, I want to break free from my patriarchal father, politically correct motif, was already firmly in place in the original. Their brilliant idea for modernizing the story, then, is just to do more of that at the expense of further minimizing the classical romance elements. This is how they add nuance. You know, when you always hear them talk about nuance, oh, we're making it more nuanced. Well, they add nuance by removing nuance so that the characters are motivated entirely by boring self-actualization mumbo jumbo, mumbo jumbo, rather than just partially being motivated by boring self-actualization mumbo jumbo. In fact, this is how the left updates everything from movies to books, even buildings, right? For anything at all that they're updating, it means Remove the romantic elements, remove the the fanciful elements, um, remove anything that's like beautiful, creative, unique, like take all that out and replace it with a blander, more banal, uglier version of what it already was. This is what they're doing with our entire culture, which is why this Disney stuff is important because it is just one manifestation of this larger, far-reaching campaign And that is why the whole campaign, not just the new Little Mermaid, 
is today canceled. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. And uh, if you want to join us there, you can become a member and by using code Walsh at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.